And welcome back. If you've been a long time viewer of my channel, you'd know that I like to show very cool, extremely useful, and highly affordable electronic test equipment as well as other gadgets. If you're new to my channel, then be sure to click the product review link shown at the end of this video. Many of those product review videos also contain money-saving coupon codes and you'll also be supporting my channel with your purchase. Today I'll be showing you one of the most useful electronic devices that you can own. This device can be used by home inspectors, auto mechanics, plumbers, HVAC technicians, electricians, or electronic technicians and hobbyists. What you see right here is an infrared thermal imager, very similar to the more expensive FLIR type thermal imaging devices. But with this unit here, you won't have to spend anywhere near what a FLIR unit cost. As a matter of fact, the price for this unit was just reduced to an incredibly low level. After watching this video, be sure to check it out at the link placed in the video description area. Okay, let's take a closer look at this infrared thermal imaging device. And we're also going to go over the specifications for the unit. And I'm also going to explain a few of the many uses for this device. Now with this particular unit, not only does it have the ability to show you infrared, but it has an ordinary camera built into it. So what you could do is you could aim this at a target that you want to take a look at. And you can look at the image without the infrared and then you can push the button over here, the right arrow or the left, which I'll show you in a minute when I take this out of the box, and you can actually have the infrared slowly start to overlay that image so you can get a better idea of where the heat is coming from in relation to the other image. So let's open this up, take a look inside. Very nicely packaged. Right here is the instruction manual. We'll go over that in a minute. Carry strap. And it also includes a 4 gig micro SD card. And this is for storing the images that this unit can take. And right over here is the unit itself. In this nice carry pouch. With this clip. And over here, you would connect the strap onto, shoulder strap. So let's open this up, slide out the unit. Okay, here it is. Very nice display. Here you can see the infrared, there's your camera, there's your LED. And this button right here is used for taking snapshots using the ordinary camera or the infrared camera. On the bottom, you have this brass threaded insert to go on a tripod. Your battery door is right here. This slides off. And you have your four AA batteries. Slide it back in. On top right over here is where the SD card is inserted. Okay, you have this little strap for your wrist. Let's go over the manual first and then we'll take a closer look at the unit and power it up. Right over here, the display screen, 2.4 inches, and that's a full angle, high resolution color screen. Resolution of infrared image is 3600 pixels. Resolution of the visible image is 0.3 megapixels. Field angle, shortest focal distance, is right around a half of a meter so a little more than one and a half feet. Thermal sensitivity, 0.15 degrees Celsius. Range of temperature measurement, minus 20 degrees Celsius up to 300 Celsius, which is right around 572 degrees Fahrenheit. Accuracy of the temperature measurement is plus or minus 2% or plus or minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Emissivity, adjustable, which I'll explain more later, 0.1 to 1. Image capturing frequency is 6 Hz. Range of wavelength is 8 to 14 micrometer. The unit has a fixed focal distance. 
color palette I'll show you later you could choose different color palettes when viewing the thermal imaging the vision option is using the normal camera and the infrared how they can blend together which I'll show you memory card micro SD and that is a 4 gig included with the unit file format is BMP power supply 4 AA batteries battery life 6 hours and you can make it probably a little longer or a little shorter depending on how bright the backlight is set for the unit auto power off time 12 minutes and let's see what else is important here dimension 212 millimeter 95 millimeter by 62 the weight is 320 grams and it does have a two-year warranty operating temperature minus 5 Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius storage temperature minus 20 Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius and relative humidity 10 percent relative humidity to 80 percent now when I show you on the camera there's a setting that's going to be emissivity right here and what that is in order to get the most accurate reading using the infrared for a particular type of material you can adjust that setting it says concrete sand water uh, gypsum all types of things human skin and you want to adjust that the unit has it set by default at 0.95 and for most of your applications it should be fine but if you want the most accurate level you're going to want to adjust it right here using this chart and you can see right over here it says the accurate value of emissivity is very important to the accurate measurement of temperature the surface emissivity has a great impact on the measured temperature taken by this device is what they mean to say and you would use this chart alright let's take a closer look at the unit now and let me power it up fits very comfortably in your hand this part here is a harder plastic and the yellow is almost like a rubberized coating wherever the yellow's at the button just hard plastic and this piece here all hard plastic there's your display screen okay now to power up the unit push this menu button for a few seconds until you see the screen come on there you go let it boot up alright so right now you have your battery strength I've been playing with this quite a lot and you're looking at the visual camera right now so you can see my hand through the camera and if you want what you would do is you would slowly add in the infrared. So let me put my hand down there. And you're going to see it shade in. Alright, so you're looking at my fingers. And back to the original. I'm going to hit this one to go back. And I'll show you better images in a minute, but you can see my fingers. Wherever the crosshairs are located, that's the temperature you're going to measure. So you can see over there drop down. If I go to the yellow right there, it's much hotter, around 90. Push this button here once. And you can see it going back out. And that's regular camera. So let's go over the settings for the unit. Now if I want to take a picture, what you would do is you push the trigger once. And it says, do you want to store photos? So if I want to store, yes, I push the menu button once. If I don't, I push this button once. And this is extremely useful, especially if you're a home inspector. If you'd like to add images to a report, you can do so by saving them to the SD card. Then later, using the SD card, you can remove those images to add them to the report. So let's push menu right here once. All right, so up here, make sure it's clear for everybody to see. Alright, so 13 at the top is images that are stored. So I go to 13 and I hit select. Here's all my images. I can put select right there. And I can start looking through. There's my hand. That's my dog. Let's go the other way. It's my hand. That's an air conditioned vent with the heat on. You can see right there. There's the grill. And I'm slowly adding in the infrared imaging. And then you can see how hot it is. So now let's go back to menu. Hit it again. So 13 is how many images are saved. 423 
is the time, all right? You have the year, the month, the day, and that's the current time. So let me go back to menu. Up here, you could adjust the target that moves around on the thermal imaging. I leave that off. Now this is the emissivity. You hit select, and then you could change up and down. We'll leave it at 95. And I could hit over here. That's the color palette. You notice that the white is the hottest and beyond the purple is the coldest. There's other palettes you could choose. There's a gray shading one backwards. You have that one, that one, and I'll leave it on that one. Here you could change degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius by selecting that. There's degree C. All right, select that. And up here is the backlight. Keep it kind of low because if you make it go too high, what's going to happen, you're going to use a lot of your battery up. So if I select that, see it's getting brighter and brighter. I mean, this thing can get super bright, but you're just going to burn up your battery. So keep it down around 20. And let's see what else. That's image remaining on the card. Yours is going to say just under 4,000 megabyte. And that's it with the settings for this. There's not that many settings. It's very simple. So let me hit menu again to get out of here. Now I'm going to show you some examples of what you can use this for. Now an electrician would use this to look for high resistance connections inside of a service entrance panel or a meter can to look at the lugs. You can see one of the wires at the top right has a high resistance connection generating heat. In this image here, you could take a look at electric motors to look for hot spots and windings. And this image here, you can see the heat generated by the winding and the location of the winding. And you would move the infrared imager around the entire motor to make sure everything is uniform. And over here, a plumber can use this to look at the flow of hot water or to check the insulation on a water heater. And at the lower left, with the shading from the infrared coming in, you can see the recirculating pump for the hot water. And full shading. You can see the dark blue area isn't indicating any heat escaping from the tank. You can also look for leaking hot water lines underneath a concrete slab. If a leak was found, it would look like what you see right here. Look for air leaks around windows and doors. Look for hot spots on an engine. Or you could also take a look to make sure the cooling system is working properly. Over here you see the upper radiator hose. And you can see the coolant flowing through that hose. Over here you're looking at the rear side of the engine towards the firewall. The top part is the oxygen sensor. Now perfect this works if you want to make sure that your catalytic converter is not partially restricted. Heat coming in from the engine side should match what's on the outlet side. Here you can see the white with the yellow is on both sides, indicating that the exhaust gases are flowing straight across with little or no restriction. An HVAC technician can use this for inspecting ductwork for leaks. And over here we're looking at a gas air handler. And you can see we're shading in the infrared. And you can see that there's heat behind that panel, more than likely the pilot light for the gas furnace. Electronics technicians can look for components that are heating up excessively. And right here you can see the resistor on the right, and on the left are diodes. And over here we're taking a look at the heat sink with a TO220 transistor. And a good image of my hand and you're looking at hot water coming out of a shower head. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.